Welcome to the Cappuccino Club's social TV channel. An empowered woman is someone who knows the strengths and isn't afraid to embrace it. So I invite you to join us as we introduce you to a community of South African business women who inspire change through conversations and who also wish to empower other women by sharing their stories. Thank you for tuning in to our channel. Don't go away. We'll be right back. If you're just joining us, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Brigitte Limbander. I am a live video camera coach. I am a talk show host, a producer, and a live streaming advocate who loves to help brands, entrepreneurs, and social good initiatives tell their stories and have a great online experience. My co-host is an accomplished senior executive herself, Viola Manuel, and she has been nominated for multiple awards. She was CEO of the Cape Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the Executive Director of the Cape IT Initiative, a member of the Western Cape Premier's Council of Skills, just to mention a few. Viola also serves as a non-executive at the National Sea Rescue Institute and is the Deputy Chair of the Cape Town Stadium. She has got two entrepreneurial ventures, GNV Retail, as well as Afri Wellness, but she says her most proud achievement is being a mom to her 10-year-old son, Shay. Viola set up the Cappuccino Club as a social platform to meet inspirational ladies at various stages of their lives. Viola, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Viola, just before we introduce our guests for today, just give us a brief background as to um, why you started the Cappuccino Club. Okay, so Cappuccino Club started about nine years ago, and it was really just a social opportunity for me to meet my friends and for all my friends to meet each other because I found that I just knew these amazing women and I wanted them to get to know each other. So that was really why I started Cappuccino Club. And then the bright minds that I surrounded myself with said to me, Viola, this is a great opportunity. Why don't we move it onto a more formal platform, which we then did. So we had these little get togethers and events and they were amazing. Um, we had some great speakers getting together and we then decided to um, start putting a WhatsApp group together and there's no smiling kitties or dogs with mugs of steaming coffee. But what it's about is just posting opportunities that will benefit women in business or even if you are a home engineer, but just opportunities and um, just really to put down um, the the information that we felt women would need to go through their day. And that was really how it started. And then you and I had a conversation about moving it to the next level, which was starting the uh, social media um, channel. And we have had some great speakers and I'm excited about today. One of our speakers today is one of the ladies that helped keep me motivated with Cappuccino Club and was really inspirational in putting the brand together and the um, brand image that you see was her work. So I'm really excited um, about the ladies we're going to meet today. Fantastic. So let's not waste any time and let's invite the ladies onto the show. An empowered woman is someone who knows her strengths and isn't afraid to embrace it. We invite you to join us as we introduce you to a community of South African business women who inspire change through conversations and also wish to empower other women by sharing their stories. And welcome to the show, ladies. Wonderful to have you join us. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much you for inviting us. <laughs> it's a big pleasure. I'm going to just do a quick round table. So if you ladies can quickly introduce yourselves, tell us um, where you're from, what company you represent, and what your role is, just very, very briefly. Shall we start uh, with Portia? 
Oh yes. Um, well, my name is it's Portia Masimula, and I'm the co-founder and the MD of Karisani Group. So basically, we are a software development company. So we develop um, mobile and web application, and we are based in Cape Town, Corps. <laughs> and I'm happy to well, join. Welcome to the show, um, Leslie Ann. Can you introduce yourself? Good morning, everybody. I'm Leslie Ann Mayer. I'm the managing director of Urban Fluid. Um, we are a design eccentric agency um, within Ottery in Cape Town. Um, and we have under our umbrella UF Fashion, we have UF Manufacturing, we have UF Architects, and UF Media. And I'm a mother of three, <laughs> if you want to know a little bit. I'm a mother of three kids, age 13, 14, and 16. Nice. Wonderful. That's yeah. good to know because, you know, as women, we juggle many balls. And yeah. um, sometimes we look at people and we think, you know, oh, wow, she's got a perfect life and she probably doesn't have any children. Um, we <laughs> can be told there often are children in the mix. And so it's good to know that. Um, could we hear from Nadine? Morning, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to the show. Um, I'd like to start by saying I'm a mother of four. And um, I started my company about 20 years ago. And we are in the energy sector, oil and gas sector. We specialize in liquid petroleum gas, um, downstream distribution. And one of my core roles and one of my big projects actually is converting vehicles to drive on LP gas instead of petrol and diesel. Thank you, Nadine. Wow. Howard, could you introduce yourself? Hi, good morning, ladies. My name is Hawa Palika. I'm the founder of Afterpod Communications. Um, I'm more of a creative thinker and strategist. And um, yeah, actually, people ask me, what do I really do with life? But uh, what do I do as a job? But uh, I just love life. And uh, that's just who I am. And um, yeah, and I'll be on it for a very long time. Very naughty friends. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Thank you for introducing yourselves. And I want to say a huge big welcome to our audience. Um, and, you know, our audience is welcome to ask us any questions if they like during the course of the conversation. Do let us know where you are watching us from. It's always great to know where people are located because um, we are live to a global audience. So let us know where you're joining us from. We say hello to everyone on Facebook and we want to say hello to everyone watching us on LinkedIn. Um, and shall we kick off with our, with our first question? So what we'd like to know is, what was your first thoughts around setting up your business? What got you motivated? What got you started in the industry that you currently are? Shall we start with Portia? Oh, okay. Well, um, the reason why I started this uh, this business is just the fact that you know uh, I wanted to empower myself and others as well. You know, uh, I think also this thing of growing up and reading these all these inspirational, influential business people. You know, I grew up. My grandmother used to buy magazines, and I used to read about the operas, the Steve Jobs. You know, the micro. I mean, all these guys who've, who've, who've ran businesses. I mean, so I, I, I had, a, I had a, like that courage that one day, you know, I wanna, I wanna run my own thing, you know. But I knew, of course, I had to start with the corporate route and work and get some experience, and 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 and, and I realized that corporate is just not me. You know, there was something beyond that just for me to sit in corporate and i wanted to uh create something that that will impact people's lives and that could actually change the world that we are in especially in the space that i'm in you know if, if, if you can if you saw even on my thing and now we're currently busy uh developing one of the application that was going to be in the uh health industries that could that's going to solve problems in the in the in the health industry so I'm always about wanting to, the reason why, in, in short, I wanted to create something that would change and impact people's lives and that I, I can look back and say, wow, that's a legacy that I created for the next generation. Because I'm all about creating something for the next generation, of course. Cool. Wonderful. We touch on the Leslie Ann. Leslie Ann, am I on? Yes. 
Yes, you are. Okay. Um, what inspired me to start this business? I've always been in fashion. I've always worked for major South African retailers, um, at which point a large amount um, in the late in the 90s, the early 2000s, we were, uh, were compelled to import everything. Um, what got me started in this business was to create a, a platform and a space for um, local brands, local designers to research uh, manufacturing in Cape Town especially but for local brands and local designers. Um, and that's what inspired me in 2017 actually to push more for 2015 actually, but more so um, in 2017 um, to push my business towards um, local production, local manufacturing and sourcing. So Wonderful. today having, so today having um, seen a lot of the young designers who have grown with me from 2015 to where they are now is actually what keeps me pushing forward um, and keeps me going um, because there's not many platforms for our fashion or designs or even our local brands, be it an alcohol brand, be it any type of brand to grow and produce within South Africa. That is amazing. Thanks, Lizzie. And Nadine? You know, they say that um, a necessity is the mother of all invention. And I basically fell into my industry by default. I went on holiday with my husband and I saw um, vehicles driving on gas in, in, in Europe. And when we came back home, I thought, wow, why not here? And it took me quite a bit of um, investigation into the industry. And then I thought this could be this could work. This could be a business. And um, it was very difficult 20 years ago to try and uh, uh, convince the banks on the funding institutions that you want to start something uh, in gas because to them it was like rocket science. And my first few years was very very daunting. Um, so my to today, um, it, it's gone much better. And I've got personally no formal education in the energy sector. Um, I just got a bit of, I had a bit of business background and that's why I bought my business from there. Wow. Wow. That is inspirational. <laughs> Thank you. How, how did you get started? Um, well, I tried, um, I think, you know, Porsche touched on to something. Porsche touched on to something. It's about leaving a legacy. And I think for me, it was leaving a legacy for my son. Um, I did not want my son to be a latch door kid. Um, so I took the, you know, the jump from being in corporate into um, being an entrepreneur. It has been very hard doing that. And it was also a way of finding myself. And um, I went full circle because going from corporate, from being in health to um, into communications, everything else, I came back to the art, which I love. And that's how I decided that, you know what, I'm going to be an entrepreneur because it have me, it gives me the flexibility and the creativity to be at home to raise my son. My son is 21 years old now. It's not easy for them because um, in this life, they don't equip them, you know, with the emotional intelligence to actually survive this world. Mm -hmm. So I'm, and he's in the second year of sound engineering now. So I would, this legacy is actually for him and to show him that, you know, anything is possible through your own, um the failures and through what the tests that we and trials have been put through that you can be successful at the end of the day if we just put our, our minds through it so that's mm -hmm. that was my reason for starting up a business mm. yeah that's um I, I just want to ask you know a lot of you are talking about having started in corporate and it's something that i feel quite strongly about is this whole idea that even if you start in corporate, it almost gives you a little bit of discipline, you know, having to be at work at a certain time, reporting to a boss, being able to write business reports, being able to do all those things. And, um, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs say to me, you know, but I'm in corporate. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a great place to start. I don't know, how do you guys feel about that? You know, just sort of starting in corporate to get that level of discipline and even level of, uh, even a network because a lot of us start our businesses coming out of our corporate connections. How do you feel about that? Nadine, maybe? I, um, oh, okay. 
I, I personally don't have a corporate background, but when um, I, I, I I sat with members of the, uh, I, I sat on the board of directors for the Liquid Petroleum Gas Safety Association, and that in itself is a very 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 corporate uh, environment, if I can say so, because most of the heads of the oil companies are foreign multinationals, and I personally found that background very stifling because it is very stifling and very bureaucratic and by virtue that I was a small ver uh, business owner I could basically break down that bureaucratic ba uh, uh, um, barrier and make quicker decisions and have a faster turnaround time. Okay. Howell, what about you? My experience. I, th I think it was a, 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 a um, it's actually good when you go through these things because you actually learn a lot about yourself and you have this discipline involved and you learn things like labor law, you learn a whole lot of things, but you also learn the other part of things where you're not allowed to be yourself. And then, um, you know, but I think you need to, you need to walk, you know, the, those kind of steps. And I remember when I started many years ago, there was no computer and there was no platform. I know I sound like a, a like a dinosaur, right? But at that particular time, um, we had to actually, if you wanted to create a filing system, we had to manually do that. So um, our systems thinking came into place, you know. So um, designing, me being an artist, this, and remember, artists then back in the days, because I come from an Indian background, um, art is not considered a career. So I completed, you know, my art, but then I had to go into corporate, and I ended up at uh, Metropolitan Health. That's where I started in the executive suite and then in the marketing side of things. And it was um, it was just a life-changing thing. And you, you kind of realize that this is not just where I want to be and I don't want to be put in a fishbowl, you know. Um, and if you're creative spirit, you, you really just want to break out of it. But I embraced everything that I went through. I embraced the fact that I got cracked out about that the customer comes first about, you know, um, you know, that there's time for this. You can't, you know, you can't just do what you want to do. And you had to tell the line. But that actually built my character to the point that I could actually say, you know, one day that, you know what, I'm actually don't do it for this. I actually want to be a boss. And what makes me happy? And um, so I'm thankful for my corporate career. I'm thankful that I've gone through many companies, you know, to get to the point where I am now. Because without that, at back in the days, we didn't have that kind of access to business studies in this. So you had to learn the business acumen from, from that kind of, you know, watching in that environment. So yeah, I think it's, um, in, in sitting in corporate, you know, um, don't think this is the end of the world. Learn, take what you can, and then use that, you know, and adapt that to where you want to go to in the future. Mm -hmm. Leslie-Anne, what do you think? Um, can you repeat the question? Because I lost you there for a second, and so I caught up while somebody was um, already talking. No, it's so. So, what we've basically been talking about a few of the ladies when they spoke about their journey, spoke about having started yes. in corporate or at least yes. being some, some type of corporate structure. And, and my yes. question really is you know, does that is that something that helps you as a small business um, owner at some stage? Uh, is the discipline of being part of a corporate learning to write reports, reporting to someone? Um, understanding corporate culture, how I mentioned labor law, understanding labor law, and those things. Does that assist you when you start your own business? Oh, totally, it does assist you when you start in business. And I mean, I am forever grateful for the corporate um, structure that I had that's um, built me um, and um, given me a lot of tools, skills, worked on different systems that I can be able to implement into my business right now. Um, having having been um, not only um, you know the skills that you learn within the corporate, um, but now even in my business, um, having the other day having still relationships, building relationships within corporate, still having that. Um, for an example, one of the young designers who started with me is now being taken on by huge South African retailer by TFG and brought me into a space. Um, doing a project with them on talking to South African retailers on Friday, which brought me face to face with somebody who was my manager when I was in corporate. And now I'm sitting across the table, and it was quite interesting and exciting at the same time. Awesome. Somebody um, um, 20 you. years ago that started, and now they um, sitting across the table. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Awesome. Anyways, 
Well, uh, on my side, I feel like uh, the corporate really, it, it did play like a significant role in my, in my journey specifically. Um, what I've learned there was, was discipline, you know, because, and, and, and to be accountable for everything that you do. So like, as you run your business, you know that you, you are the architect of, 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 of uh, of this business, of this, of this business. So, like you know, in the morning you have to be there firstly before everyone else comes. And that that I've learned in being in corporate, you know, uh, timing. You have to be there in time. As a leader, you know, I've learned also leadership skills. Like as a leader, you have to lead as an example, and then the whole team follows you on that. So I've I've learned like to be disciplined, of course. But when it comes to the business aspect, I, I, I didn't really get that. I've learned that as I started my own business. I didn't get that uh, business, you know, uh, aspect on how to to run, how to be how to lead on the board level. Because I, of course I wasn't sitting on a board. I didn't get to that board level. But now as I started my own business, a lot of things that I'm unpacking, I'm learning a lot of things about leadership about you know how do you engage on a on a on a on a executive level and also on a board level so i i guess that the only thing that i've learned was accountability and discipline only that but the whole of uh, uh how to to run a business and and how to you know um to manage a business i, I learned it as i got into i started my own business now I, I, like as i always say that starting a business is not just uh, it, it, it's it's a lifetime um, university. Let yes. me put it like that. In university, I feel like in university, I didn't even learn much. I got my degree, but I, I feel like it, it wasn't that solid enough to teach me, to prepare me for the world. And yes. I feel like starting my own business has prepared me for the world. Awesome. Thank you. May I just have a comment on that? A question Please. to the lady. I just like to reverse the question because it started off coming from corporate and into your own your own business. But what is the chance of going from your own business back into corporate? Because as as Portia says, it's it's a university of life. What's what's the chance of going from being your own boss and and and, and running your own show back into corporate? I I comment in that sorry I I did a stint where I had that and then got approached to go back into corporate and did it for two years and literally lasted two years having after having the taste of, of, of running my own business um, and then going back in 2016 and saying um, I want um, I want to be back um, running my own business yeah so, so I've got I've got one or two ladies that I've actually invited to participate. They and who had been small business owners and decided to go back into corporate. I mean, let me let me share some of my personal experience. I am, you know, I, I sit on two boards, which I happen to enjoy. Oh my goodness, which are fantastic. Um, I found my excited about that. The the agile now. So we've got we've got quite a few opportunities, but I know that you know I went into entrepreneurship. I sort of ran my own consultancy because I knew that at some stage I um, was going to go back into corporate and go back into that um, environment at a more strategic and executive level. So I know for a lot of women that is it's fantastic that we have those options. You know that you have those choices. Um, because a lot of women uh, sort of feel that they are either stuck in corporate or they're stuck as entrepreneurs. And I think the whole idea for me is that you need to do what works for you at that time. And as we evolve and change, we might find that what I'm doing right now doesn't perform me. It doesn't give me enough. You know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily happy in terms of where I am now. I would like to go back into being an entrepreneur. And the choices are available. Um, I think that when you are part of that corporate structure, taking those networks, for example, with you is essential for, um, you know, at least laying the foundation for your small business, you know? So, um, yeah, that's just my, my thoughts on it. Thank you. Okay. So, so ladies, um, what, are some of the, what are some of the real challenges of starting a small business? You know, some of the, the stuff that keeps you up at night? Because I know that um, it's very glamorous and it's perceived to be fantastic. Um, but I needed to just know what are some of the um, the real challenges if somebody's sitting out there and saying, you know, I'm going to start my own business. What are some of the things that they should be prepared for? Portia? 
I think, uh, first of all, they need to be ready emotionally because you go through a lot of emotion through this journey, right? I mean, they are conscious, your consciousness as well, because you, you need to be, your conscious need to be ready emotionally and physically. You have to be ready because, um, like, I'll just speak for, for myself, you know, um, when I got into business, I, I never, nobody hold my hand and say, hey, girl, do you know where you're putting yourself? It was just a matter of I was young and I wanted to, I was passionate. I was, I wanted to create something, you know, when you are young and you're like, wow. I mean, I, I, I look at the space and I'm like, wow, this is broad. This is a broader space. I can create apps. That, that was the mindset in me. But nobody has like hold my hand and say, hey, but you know, it's not about the, the you just about the passion and everything. You, you know, you need to be um you need to be emotional because you go through a lot of emotions there's there's so many things that don't work out along the journey and you have to be okay with it and 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 and, and uh, remember why you've started and why you got into this business so in natural i will say that um you know when you get to business be ready for it and be ready to take every challenge and 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 and, and be comfortable of of of, of being challenged you know, because there's, there's there's different challenges every day. It's never the same. Like I said, it's it's the best university that you can ever think of. Because you yes. don't learn by reading books here. You you learn by doing practicals, and those mistakes are real. You know, the money that you're losing, it's real. It's not just something that you yeah. read. Somebody has lost the money by the book. I mean, and my yeah. business students are not studying. We will read about these guys who lost money in business, but now it's me losing money. Practical. You know, so yeah. it's. There's they so many challenges. The challenges are, 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 are massive and, 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 and you need to be comfortable with that and, and tell yourself that, you know what, against all odds, I mean, I'm moving forward. I believe in this business. So that takes you as a person to be a strong person, to have a, a bold character and, and a strong character that, you know, I'm going to do this irrespective. Great. Liz, um, um, Nadine, what do, what do you find? What are some of the major challenges in your sector? Without, without a doubt, I, I won't say in my sector, I will say in my business. Okay. Without a doubt, for me, was staff. Staff is a very big challenge because now suddenly you are responsible for these people, these three or four or five people working for you. You're responsible for them, you're responsible for their families. And uh, uh, there was a comment earlier that said, customer is king. I don't believe that the customer is king. I believe you've got to make your, your, your staff king. And from there, if you treat the staff well and empower your staff and invest in your staff, because as a small business owner, they've got to buy into your dream. And they've got to live your dream to sell for you and, and to promote your business. Because it's down to only the three or the four or the five of you in the business to make that business grow. So, Absolutely. so I, I personally found a big challenge in staff. Because they don't only come to you, and you're not only responsible for them, but they come to you with their daily challenges. And a lot of the time, Viola, I find that half of my day is spent on managing staff or staff problems, or and the productivity is actually basically hard. So personally, in my uh, business, um, uh, 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 staff, but sorry, just to, to add on, when you ask about challenges in my industry, because it's the oil and gas industry, it's a very, um, I would say, labor-intensive industry, and the barriers to entry are very, very high because you've got to invest in a lot of expensive infrastructure. Um, but that's another topic. But as a <laughs> owner, I would say staff without a doubt. Yeah. Howard, what is what are some of your challenges when you um, started up your small business? What do you find to be the challenges of being a small business owner? Actually, um, we have a lot of finding finance. Finance was the biggest challenge um, because um, when I was young I was too young for business and now I'm older I'm still not right for this, this kind of thing, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> so you have to you know if you, you had to have collateral and things like that back in the day and we didn't have that I didn't have a home I didn't have something that I could say okay uh, you know um, lend me money against this so I had to creatively go and think how and I didn't get to know doing business and I went back to the basics. Um, what can I do? So I went back to art. And so I started designing again. And because designing only takes my time, 
um, I was able to, you know, build up my capital like that by, you know, getting clients and saying, okay, I can give you my time and I can design because it doesn't take, there's nothing else I have to pay for. Whether they wanted the things to go to printers, that was their thing. I didn't have to put out money. And that's how I had to, you know, build up capital because banks wouldn't, you know, give me, even now I bought a house last year for the first time. And um, the, okay. the, the, the okay. barriers I... The baddest things, lady. The baddest I had to jump because I'm an older person, you know. And what they wanted to know, and all, it's it's ridiculous. It's like totally. It's, they don't open it up, and I'm not in. I haven't reached the million, you know, million or two million rand, um, you know, profit yet. So I don't qualify for certain kinds of funds. So it's uh, so finance. I think was the biggest thing because everything else would start with that. I don't. I would rather subcontract. Or use interns to give them, you know, that kind of exposure. Yeah. Um, so I keep the, you know, the operation level, you know, the cost put down that way. But finance was definitely the biggest uh, barrier yeah. for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leslie, and what do, what are you finding? What are some of the biggest challenges for you as a small business owner? Um, it it would it's always I think the common thread is finance, definitely. Um, definitely it's um. For me, I've created quite a vertical chain within our business, which kind of helps us, which never helped me before, before I had um, bought the factory last year. Um, before that, the challenge was the fact that I was outsourcing most of my business, managing and had to lie in managing other people supply chain to meet my needs. Mm. Now that my business has shifted and I have my own um, plant, if you would call it that, manufacturing space, um, the business is vertical. Um, so the challenge before was finance, it's always still. Um, I think for small business owner in my industry, also it's exposure. Um, um, a challenge is exposure and growing yourself digitally. The so use of, of resource. Um, for me, the next step would be to grow um, more digitally, and that would be mean the challenge would lie in obviously again financing or marketing. Hmm. So I, I think so I think we marketing. yeah it takes, marketing takes a bit of finance. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We've I think we've identified some real challenges. I mean, the financial thing is not just a challenge in terms of having funds. To run your business, it's even the financial thing of trying to go and apply for a bank loan. It's a very different thing for a small business owner to apply for a bank loan or to buy a house or to buy a car because everything with the formal sector or the banks, the financial institutions, is set up formal or paperwork. You know, the questions they ask you, the way they assess you is different. So you need to be aware of that. You need to be aware of the fact that I always tell entrepreneurs before you start your business, do you have at least six months cash flow? Um, clients mm -hmm. pay for late, mm -hmm. but a mm -hmm. credit score, all mm -hmm. of these challenges, nobody, exactly what Portia said, nobody tells you about that, mm -hmm. you know? Staff is a big thing. Your sister's brother's mm. cousin's auntie comes to you and says, Employ my child. You have yeah. to say, No, <laughs> you know. Um, everybody's, everybody's got these expectations that you started yeah. your business just to employ them or to give them money, and then yeah. and it becomes challenging, you know. And, and also, you know, mm. like just to attest to what you're saying now, Viola, I mean, uh, there's an analogy, you know, when you and busy people think that, she, okay, oh, she's rich, she's got money. But they don't know that, you know, when you're mm. starting a business, like the, for the past five years, it's all about investing in the mm. business. You're not actually making money because the money that you make, it has to go back to the business. So that analogy it needs to be changed amongst the black community specifically because they always think that, oh, yeah, she's rich. She, she's got money. You know, they, they, the minute you tell them, oh, yeah, these are our cousins, hire them. And, you know, we need also to educate people like that, to educate people that, you know, for the first five, year, five years, you don't make money in the business. You actually invest more money than, like, all the profit that you make goes back. It's, it goes back to the business. And people don't have that knowledge. True. That is so, so true. Can I ask you, ladies, do you think that at this point in time, um, you know, just talking about access to funding, that women are still at a disadvantage when it comes to the male con uh, counterparts and getting access to funding from the from the banking sector. 
Well, I will certainly, I will certainly say yes because I was reading one of the mm. newspapers uh, last, I think, last week of by Forbes, and it shows that women have been complaining about these uh, excessing, trying to excess funding because when you compete with your male counterpart, and of course, most of these people that are occupying these funding institutions are male. That's the reality. When you get there to that room, you compete with the with the other male. Of course, you are not considered. They will consider a, a male more than you. It doesn't matter if you've got the same skill set, the competence, or everything. But still, they will actually choose to offer the uh, cash to the to to, uh, to 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 a male. You know, and that has been proven. Like. The, it's been proven like out it's out there so it, it, it's because they, they're saying women are, are seen as very as a, as a risk i was i don't know why people think still think mm. like that i know traditionally i mean heroes i mean if you look at our history women were not allowed to run businesses of course it's going to take some time to change that mentality you know in 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 in, 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 in not only south africa across it's a problem across the whole continent so it, it's still an issue for women to access funding. And I don't think um, even this institution, as they speak, as they put it out there, you know, I've tried myself, I've tried a lot of organizations to, to access the funding, but it, it's just a lengthy process. You don't know what's going on. And you had that another mail just mm -hmm. came and got the money and you're like, you get even more frustrated. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, I feel like it, it's very tough for women and it's very tough for women. I think it's it's a matter of coming up together and we create our own financial institutions, I mean, funding yeah. or, 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 or crowdfunding. And then that's the only way we're going to break this thing. Otherwise, it's gonna take some time. That's great. That's interesting. Thanks, Portia. Thanks, Portia. Okay. Nadine, have you had any challenges in, in um, terms of accessing funding because you're a woman? I, I personally, I don't necessarily think so. I think if you go to any lending institution and you've got a sound business plan and the financials make sense, I don't see why you wouldn't get the same amount of funding or funding or preferential, men will, men will be preferred, get preferential treatment. I think it's down just to the bottom line if your business plan is sound and your financials make sense. Brigitte, can I, can I, I have go ahead, Leslie? Sure. Go no. ahead. Um, um, you know what Nadine was saying, um, I must be honest, I haven't come up with a challenge of um, of getting, of struggling with finance as a woman to obtain versus a man. I might have found that in other forms within a corporate workspace, after I've, I've, I've experienced that. Um, but now in my own business, um, I haven't had anything that's come across that is would adversely affect me as a woman right now. In I probably do. Okay, Kawa? I think it comes from, it depends, I think it probably depends on the sectors, you know, what sector you're in. Yeah, it does uh, depend on the sectors. You know, my sector so it does of manufacturing to um, another sector which is male dominated, maybe in energy or maybe yeah. in, uh, in IT, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so let me so let yeah. me ask you. Government is making this big deal. I'm going to just hold on to this comment. Government is making this big deal out of empowerment, and women should be given the opportunity to access this economy. And they say nice things about how women um, are reliable in terms of paying back microloans, how women are part of this economy and are the foundation, and we teach our children. And there's like a lot of commentary about it. Have any of you found that? In terms of your business, you've been able to benefit directly from this whole triple BEE. Has have any of you in your business found that when it comes to this empowerment drive, that your business could you can put it on your hand on heart, I benefited out of this. Um Personally, I feel like, especially, I mean, when it comes to government, you know, uh, it's more about just covering the score. I feel like that. It's just a matter of covering the score, but saying, yeah, we're doing one, two, three, but they're actually not doing it for, for these women, you know, and, yeah. and I just feel like if you're an entrepreneur, you're just on your own, you know, 
like you said, like you said earlier on, like you need to be prepared. Like at least you've got funds for 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 the whole year to to you know to rely on anyone, not to go around and looking for funding, and 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 you know. So yeah. I feel like it's just a matter of just talk, talk, and covering the score. And and a lot of women. I'm not just I'm saying this, but a lot of women. You know, like when last year when I ran that women empowerment thing, a lot of women were crying. Like they they've been into this institution, but they've never been helped. You know, yeah. and, yeah. and and funny enough, you find it like they're talking about this women empowerment, but there's nothing really they're doing to help women in business. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure about private, but I'm talking about yeah. the government, and it's all about yeah. who do you know? It's like all about are you are you are you related to the minister? Are you the cousin of the minister? Then, if yeah. you're not the cousin of the minister, you're going to suffer. Period. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, with, I agree with Portia there. I agree with Portia there because I had two young ladies working with me recently, Valesa and Zuki, and they and they actually went for a, a tender within government, and um, they were they were on top. They they put the strategy there. They were going to get it, and then then inside they said to them, they're not going to get it because that that miss is going to give it to a friend because he owes that friend. These girls were devastated. You know, and that is a, it's a it's a hell of an issue, and I think government, you know, the president should not be having conversations with corporate, private corporate business. Should be having conversations with us as small business women and asking mm -hmm. us how do we go forward? Because how yeah. do we help? How do you know? Look at the people on the grass because we we actually we have um, we don't I don't get help on this, you know. I don't think any of us get hands on this yet. We have to really figure it out for ourselves. So have a conversation with us and see how we can take this forward. Yeah. You know, but yeah. yeah, it's a very that's why I don't do government pretenders. I don't go for that because it's a whole issue of paying paying late and then you cannot your business actually suffers in the end. So I actually yeah. stay away completely and that's a choice that I've made. Yeah. And it's and it's about the brown envelope. Remember yeah. that about the brown that's envelope. A, Yes, brown envelope. You have to put the the brown envelope uh, up front. Yeah, I think I think there's I think there's quite a lot to be learned in that space. Um, I I I agree with you, Howard. When I speak to young um, entrepreneurs, I say to them, if you can help it at all, do not start your business mm -hmm. on tender because it. I've just met too many people where the timing around government payments, everything completely cripples their businesses. But cash flow, if you're not aware of cash flow, it will completely cripple your business because you will wait and wait and wait for payments and it, and it messes up your, your cash flow. So, so the whole idea around that, um, I really appreciate your honesty on that. You know, it, it's not something, I think the government wants to think that they do well. And, and even if we start talking about the quality of the work that's handed out in order mm -hmm. to that box, um, Portia. You know they they talk about tick, ticking the box, and you know we've given work to fifty percent of our suppliers as women. But what is the quality of the work we're giving us? It's the bottom of the barrel stuff. You know the quality, mm. the high end, uh, the easy, the quality work all goes all goes to male owned businesses. You know, so we really do need to sit down and think about this more. Um, I think strategically. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, I know we're coming, time is catching up with us, and we had some interesting questions. We want to just see, um, have, a, have a maybe run a few comments on some of the questions we received. Yes, um, Chanel wanted to know how are we sharing skills and experiences learned along the way um, with up and coming small businesses? And I'm just going to kick that off by saying doing the show is how we are starting to give back by sharing our experiences in a candid manner um, i don't know if any one of you want to add to that um i think now um the information it's it's out there you know we've got social media platforms and uh, i see a lot of many uh business people they try to be transparent and, and be real and share their journeys and share their um, their insights and, and their journeys on, on social media. So you, you just have to probably follow. If you if someone that you see that is in business and in, she inspires you, you, just follow them and, and follow their story. And, they, you know, they tweet about their journey. I mean, I, I, I personally feel there is no entrepreneur who just keep quiet about it because the journey is tough. You can't just shut oh, your yes. mouth. You, know? 
you know, people now they feel like since social media has actually given us the sex, I mean, accessibility of sharing the information. So we share our journey. You know, we share our struggles. We share our, um, you know, our experiences there. So I'll personally say, watch the social media. Just see who inspire you. In the in the, be a female entrepreneur. Follow that kind of person. And yeah, and and learn. And to, in today's life, you don't need like a a physical mentor. You know, you can just follow people that inspire you, and you follow them their journey, and you get inspired. Mm. I think also, um, or personally, what I've done is that if I find that a uh, young entrepreneur or a small business woman needs help, and I can open that door for them, that's what I do. Because I know when back in the day, it was very difficult for me. No one opened doors for you know uh, for me. It's very hard because everyone wanted to keep it to themselves, and mm -hmm. I don't believe in that. So I believe in being you know open, and uh, I would open the door. And uh, like recently with Zuki and and and, and Vanessa, we went to Westboro for an energy meeting, and I ended up finding out that they were making bags and the bags was part of the bags was made in Kenya and then they brought it back to South Africa and it was finished off here in the leather part and then I said I don't, guess I don't see this and then I actually spoke to Michael Gamble and I said to him look these ladies are, are, are doing this and right there he called Kenya right there to get them you know someone there to help them mm -hmm. source and stuff and that's the thing mm -hmm. we must be open to helping others because it's not it's not going to stack it's not going to keep you back it's like paying forward the moment you pay it forward to mm -hmm. someone else you know mm -hmm. your path opens up right. and uh, and that's the thing not to be selfish about you know about that yeah mm -hmm. what, um, what i'd like to say, Matt, sorry what i'd like to say another challenge we have as 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 business owners we are all women mothers wives and a, a challenge we have is time enough time in the day to get everything done and when we commit ourselves to being in a show like this, this is where the young uh, uh, entrepreneurs can, can learn from us. We, we don't always have time to give them and say, mm. come and spend the day with me or let, let me take my time. But when we actually engage in platforms like this, this is where they should sit up and look and say, this is where we can learn from. Yeah. So so it, it's very important. I think, I think you know, we've, We've worked hard to put Cappuccino Club together. I think the whole idea that we, you know, last week we talked about the NGO, NGO sector. Um, next week we try to put something together around the academic sector and women in leadership in academia. And I'm quite excited about that show as well. Um, but I, I do feel that, you know, just having you ladies on board. And I mean, there are people in my network. I reach out to them all the time via email and say, look, would you participate? And I hear nothing from them. And that's their choice. I mean, it's a choice if you don't want to. And sometimes also, I just find that even as entrepreneurs, you go through those times where you are just struggling with your own stuff and you you really mm. just don't you know you, you don't feel like you're going to inspire anybody like today you know these days when i'm going like mm -hmm. i'm not going to inspire anybody today mm -hmm. but I, I still think even sharing those days with up-and-coming entrepreneurs makes you authentic there's a new word that's mm -hmm. about authenticity it makes yeah. you authentic it makes people want to engage with you because you're being real like cautious at least the end Yes, I mean, I'm very grateful for the space um, that you provided and this um, platforms that have been created consistently. I mean, in my industry, um, I mean, before, uh, now it's the masterclass that is the sharing platform. And we even have fashion business masterclass where together we um, get together as entrepreneurs, young women, wherever you are, um, starting a fashion business, I'm teaching you how to, how to start up, what to look for, how to build your range, how to invest your money. So it's really great now that we have podcasts, webcasts, webinars, we have so much ways of reaching people and communicating. Mm. But I, I, I still, you know, one of the things that um, one of the Cappuccino Club's platforms is the roundtable discussion. And I had some of you participate in that roundtable discussion. And one of the things we were saying is that even though there's all these social media opportunities and there's, um, you know, just go to the internet and Google five ways to start a business and you'll find pages and pages of it. I still think there's a responsibility on us as women to go to these networking events and find these young ladies who reach out to you who are brave enough to reach out to us and mm. say i enjoyed your talk um tell me a little bit about your business we are 
under a social obligation to take the time to spend with them. And one thing that I'm finding now is even with people that I'm mentoring, I, you know, just try and open the network to them, open your family to them. You know, on the day that I'm, you know, my most in a car and I say, look, I, I, I really can't um, meet with you today, but would you mind coming to my place? I've got to uh, make pickled fish, you know, or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, come and join me in the kitchen and let's just chat about business. So. I think we have to get more and more creative and innovative about how we um, share our time, but we have an obligation to do it. Mm. As entrepreneurs, as a woman who've gone through through very, very difficult start starting to our business, I think we have an obligation to help other women get to where we need to totally. be. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I think we've I think we've got a round up. Can we just um just a lot as a last question to summarize what is your advice for a young woman um, or a new entrant what would you say to them what would what could they do differently what could they learn from your journey okay i'll start um this is uh this is a journey of, of perseverance first of all hmm. and you you sometimes you have to remember that we many fails along the way but it's the Key to enduring this fail, um, the, the failures is to is to actually never give up and to learn from the lesson um, from the failure, and um, and that is a lesson within a lesson, and that you know, and then start adapting or changing accordingly. So it's it's really having pers uh, it's having perseverance to see the journey through, and the small business woman is really she has the human touch that the, that the corporate uh, business doesn't have. She looks at life a bit differently because her success is not in, uh, most of the times not based on money, but it's based on based on other things about family, and it's things that is not you know but financial strength. So they really have to think about it, what they want to do, but also know that this is not a short journey. And Portia will attest to it, and you and Leslie Ann and Nadine that it is a journey of perseverance. Do not give up. You know, you'll have many failures along the on the way, but it's not a failure. Failure means fail means first attempt in learning. That's what it means at the end of the day. So take the lesson from it and then get up. I still, you know, put a big girl panties on because that's constantly what I have to do and move on. You know, and that's that's it. I mean, that's what I do, and that's how I've survived. Mm. I Osha. Hi. Um, I'm just gonna be very simple in this. Um, um, I think the most important thing is to believe in yourself because um, you know you will get people along who are going to disrespect you along the journey out there you know that who are not going to believe in your work and what you can deliver but you know you need to wear like be able to wear thick skin and and believe in yourself and believe in your business it's your business it's your vision you know God has given you this vision he hasn't given to them you know so you have to believe in your in yourself and believe in your business and uh yeah and 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 always look at the bigger picture you know i always say look, look, you have to look beyond your surroundings don't look at where you are now and think this is this is the ending of my business look at your business doing business globally you know visualize it build a network you know, um, to make sure when you tap into those markets, you've got a nice, you've got a right network. So build build the good relationships, you know, whether if you are still in corporate thinking of, of leaving the, I mean, leaving corporate in the near future, start building those networks now. So when you move out there, you know, you've created a solid, you know, uh, relationships because business is about relationships. You mm. can't do, you work with people. You have to build relationships. Mm. So yeah, it's it's all about believing yourself, build good network for yourself. Nadine? Yes, thank you. I, I, I want to reiterate what the ladies are saying. I totally agree with how it's perseverance and failure is very important. Failure is just the, the next step to your success. Um, if you aim for the moon and you fall, you fall among the stars. So just keep on keeping on. And it's not that many times that you get beaten down. It's the amount of times you get back up. And yeah, persevere, build your networks, believe in yourself, believe in your dream, and yeah, build mm. your network. Mm. Leslie Ann? 
Hi. Um, for me, my advice, firstly, would be to plan. Planning for me has preceded um, <coughs> me as a leader, as my business, being organized, being committed, and in all of that, staying humble, completely humble to failure, humble to your position that you can humble to um, the clients that you have, um, write down your goals, spend the time setting those two five-year goals for yourself for your business. Get the steps of where you are and how you can take that. What are the next steps to take you just to the next step? Um, have the goal in mind, but what is it now that I need to do? And time management and planning Once you've done that, you can uh, take on any task as a small business owner um, to see that in the mind and to have the energy to focus on everything is definitely the painful part of planning and um, so yes that's my focus always and obviously being in a production uh, type of industry where uh, one is an outcome and the outcome is very important to manage that and um, it's also managing myself uh, in this business extremely healthy, I can say, as 10 times more important than actually having a time. I can sit until whatever hours of the morning, um, running my business, fixing my admin, doing all the little things that I, I can't get to during the day but I'm super tired. So self-care is very important in this business mm. for survival because that mm. can lead to burnout and that can lead to you giving up on your dream. So uh, during the toughness, make it, take care of yourself. That's my yeah. main, <laughs> yeah. In this mm. entrepreneurial business, it's taking care of yourself. Yeah. I, um, I, I want to thank all of you. I think it's, I think it's, it's very important. Um, I'm finding more and more conversations with women are starting to talk about self-care and that you have to look, you know, look after yourself. Um, but I also want to just say to anybody looking to do this whole entrepreneurial venture, it's very rewarding, but it's tough and it's, and it's very often difficult. And I want to say, as much as you can, be disciplined. You know, be disciplined to go and do a business plan, do a strategic plan for your business. Figure out what your implementation plan is going to look like. Put those documents together for yourself so that you can know what the vision and mission is and it goes beyond just feeling your passion and your anecdotal desire to make a change. And, and it actually moves on to an exact way of how you will go about doing it. Look at cash flow. Look at budgets. Understand those things before you even get anywhere out of the starting blocks. Get your business registered. Understand what business register. We know what it means to get your business registered. Um, join business network groups. You know, um, formal business organizations within your sector. Join those, understand um, the importance of networking. All those things are so, so important. Um, and I know you'll hear a lot of people talking about it, but it is essential that you actually take these things up quite seriously. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you for having us. Pleasure. And I want to say a huge big thank you to our audience on Facebook and our audience on LinkedIn. Thank you for joining us. Um, remember to do good stuff. And let's continue to inspire each other one conversation at a time. And if you would like to connect with the ladies on the Cappuccino Club, please join us on Facebook. Um, that's facebook.com forward slash Cappuccino Club. Or on LinkedIn, you can also join us on linkedin.com forward slash company forward slash Cappuccino hyphen club. Thank you for watching, everyone. And we'll see you same time, same place next week. Thanks, Thank you. Bye.